going to be discussing what books would make amazing TV shows, what books are making amazing TV shows right now. As you can imagine, I love this shit. Mm. So I'm organizing this video into three parts. I have a batch of TV shows to talk about that are already good shows, a batch of books that I'd love to see as shows, and then a batch of books that are already going to be shows that I'm so excited for and why I'm excited for them, and, oh I forgot, this four part, and a batch of books that I'm afraid for anyone to ever touch because the books are so perfect, how can you ever do justice to them in an adaptation? It's scary, it's scary, right? Like an adaptation can be amazing and everything you ever wanted, like catching fire. Or it could, it could be like the one that doesn't exist. It could be just not what you wanted at all. And it could threaten, it could threaten the love that's in your heart for the book. Just because you're so frustrated with how the TV show or movie came out and you just want to just block that out of your brain and it takes, you have to take the time to be like, no, 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 that doesn't even exist. Ignore it, Christine, ignore it, it didn't happen. That's traumatic. I've gone through it, you've been through it with me. <laughs> It's harsh, man. It's harsh seeing your favorite series go into a TV show that you're not a fan of. Today's discussion was inspired by our November Book Explosion Book of the Month. This month we're working with Simon & Schuster. If you don't know by now, ooh, I dropped it. <laughs> if you don't know by now, I co-host an online book club called Book Explosion. Our channel is youtube.com slash bookexplosion. We have a book that we've picked every month to read along together with you all. And then there's a live show at the end of the month where we discuss it and take live questions. We also do a segment called Dear Book Explosion once a month where we answer advice emails and stuff together and we've been doing themed months. So last month we did like send in your biggest fears and anxieties, what your boggart would be. This month we're doing send in like any Thanksgiving stories that you have, your favorite Thanksgiving food, your favorite Thanksgiving memory, like anything Thanksgiving related. So our November book of the month is Curse. And this book is already becoming a Netflix original series. It's happening. So we're gonna read the book together. So we are prepped so we can do all the comparisons. It's gonna be great. It's a fantastical retelling of sorts of the King Arthur Knights of the Round Table story. If you wanna read along with us, pick up Curse. We'll discuss it together and you'll be prepped for the upcoming Netflix show. Let's start this party with books that have already been adapted that have made amazing TV. My favorites have been things like True Blood, The Vampire Diaries. Now Vampire Diaries I think had a lot of books and so did True Blood. I think really great amazing TV can come out of adaptations from a book that's only one book long and is expanded across 13 episodes to fill a TV series season. I mean things like The Alienist. Have you watched The Alienist? It's only one book and it was expanded into 13 episodes and I want a second season so hard and they're doing one now. Oh my god, and Dirk Gently! Dirk Gently I think was a book. I'm fairly sure that's based off of a book. Not enough people were watching it and it was excellent. It was poorly marketed. Honestly, I think it has something to do with that name. The Holistic Detective Agency, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. It's too long! It's one of my favorite shows ever and I have a hard time calling it to my brain when I'm trying to tell people about it. I'm like, Dirk Gently, Dirk Gently, it's called Dirk Gently. Wait, no, no, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Another TV show that was based off of one book but ran for seven amazing seasons. Orange is the New Black. Orange is the New Black was one book about one woman's one year in jail. And it has been expanded into this beautiful series with so many amazing different types of characters. So there's so much emotion. Expanding one book into a longer lasting series is becoming more and more popular as time goes on. And the general reading fads have kind of shifted. Before we were seeing a lot of fantasy. Things like Game of Thrones. Wow, what an amazing adaptation. Those have been so successful in the past, but they're all kind of coming to the natural end. Like Vampire Diaries ended a couple of years ago. True Blood ended like five years ago now. Game of Thrones ended this year. I keep coming back to my point here. I love when TV shows come out of one book. We've had 13 Reasons Why be turned into a TV show. Love it or hate it, especially the first season, I feel like they did an amazing job expanding this story into a 13 episode arc. And then of course, we have the most recent adaptation of one book into a series that I was so excited about and then so nervous about because I did not like the teaser trailer. But now, having watched the first two episodes, I'm loving it. And that is Looking for Alaska by John Green. I am so, so, so thrilled with this TV TV show thus far. The characters are perfect. Everything's been perfect. Oh, I'm so excited to watch the rest of it. And with the rise of so many different streaming services, there's so much more opportunity for books like Looking
looking for Alaska to be expanded into a 13 episode series and delved into it in a way that doesn't cut out anything from the original novel but rather adds to the original novel and I love that. People see a little book like this and they're like how can that be expanded onto a series? You're adding more content. We're delving more in depth to these characters. There are different things going on that you don't get to see in the book that you can see in a TV show and that's my favorite kind. This is my first time having read the book that is the content for a TV show that's expanded upon like one book. Another amazing television series that came from one book. The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Have you watched it yet? Have you? Let's talk about what's already in the works, what's coming, because it's all extremely exciting. The first I have here being the Shadow and Bone Netflix series that is coming. The cast was just announced. It just started filming in Budapest. I am so pumped for this. I hope this is gonna be as amazing as the books are. The world that Lee's created is so rich and full of all these different cultures. There's just so much, there's so much to explore and the perfect perfect way to do that. Like you could not do this world as much justice in movie form. Just because there's so much more to it than just this book. Lee has expanded it so much with the Six of Crows series. They go hand in hand so I'm so glad the Six of Crows characters have been casted in the Shadow and Bone series. So those stories are gonna be told in tandem. I mean it's just it's so exciting and Ben Barnes is playing the Darkling. Ben Barnes! The Darkling! You guys! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, when I saw his face on the cast was I was like, <laughs> Ben Barnes! So I don't really know Ben Barnes other than how I know him in Westworld. His character in relationship with his soon-to-be brother-in-law in Westworld was one of my favorite things to watch, their storyline together. And my favorite parts of season two of Westworld, which was kind of all over the place, was him and his brother-in-law. I mean, I, that really, I, it was like the human string really that tied everything together. So he's great and I'm I'm so th so excited to watch him in this role and see all the other actors that I don't know as well portray all these other amazing characters. It's gonna be great, there's so much to delve into. This is one of the best series with one of the most land-ish titles to me. I know there's meaning to it like, oh, Shadow is the Darkling and oh, Bone is Alina, but the word Shadow and the word Bone are these key buzzwords in the young adult community that you see all the time. So the book doesn't stand out in my brain because I've seen those words too many times. So that's the only thing that like makes me a little nervous about how they're calling the show Shadow and Bone. I feel like Grisha verse. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to title it. I wrote no Shadow and Bone, so I hope hopefully it'll be fine. The title won't distract people. It's like the title Vampire Academy that like distracts people. Vampire Academy would make a great show. I don't have it on my list. I'm adding it right now. But it's like Vampire Academy in that the title isn't thrilling. <gasps> you know what's an amazing title? Six of Crows. Oh, Crooked Kingdom! What if they, what if, oh, they should call the series Crooked Kingdom. It's too late. Also in the works is an HBO series adaptation of They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I am so unbelievably excited about this. This is one book that's being expanded into a series. I've heard people being like, how are they gonna make that a series? That's just one book. Have you not read the concept behind this book? <laughs> We're in a world where your death is predicted like the weather. 24 hours ahead of time, you get an accurate forecast through the phone. You can use that with so many characters and Adam touches on a lot of characters surrounding our main characters that we don't get to expand into. Guess what we're gonna be able to do in a TV show? Expand. I um, I love this book and I, I, I can't, HBO is like the dream place. HBO is the dream adaptation team. They have such high standards. You know that it has to be a certain level of production value. I am so excited. This is, if you haven't read the both die at the end. Man, you gotta get on it. Just listen, you can do the audiobook. The audiobook is so good. I did the audiobook, it was amazing. I'm an Audible affiliate. You can use my link in the description to get your first book for free. I'm just, I was so, so excited for Adam when I saw that this was happening. I missed the announcement and it was like weeks later that I saw that he was at like the HBO offices on Instagram. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. this is amazing. <laughs> 
leaves so much room for creativity with the showrunners and it leaves so much room to do justice to the book. It's a win-win-win. There's always room to expand on the world of a story with other characters. With a movie, the room isn't there. You're forced to squeeze a book into a sliver of time rather than expand on a book so that everything can be like the book, but also there could be more. I quickly wanted to touch on to all the boys I've loved before because this is a case where the movie did such great justice to the book, but I know a lot of people were like, they excluded this, they excluded, it captured the heart of this book so well. We have three books, so we're getting three movies and these three movies are kind of gonna be like TV and stuff installments. Like they're three giant episodes. I think this has been handled excellently. I mean movies can be done right but if it's one movie that movie lives and dies and it's over. But with a show you live with it for a while. You get to sink your teeth into the characters and delve into them more and not miss any of the little moments that maybe you treasured in the book but weren't that big of a deal in the long run they had to lose in a movie. Another one that I believe is in the works but I don't know like how far in the works it might be because we haven't heard about it since the announcement but the Throne of Glass TV show. Now this is a show that I think could only be successfully adapted by a network with a lot of money to put behind a budget because it's a fantasy and there's a lot of gorgeous stuff we need to see. Right, like Game of Thrones level CGI is needed. It's delicate, like I want this to be amazing, but this is one that I think is way better suited for television than a film because the world is so big. It really is an ensemble piece. I know the first two Two books concentrate mostly on Selena, but when it comes down to it, we got a lot of characters with a lot of stories. It's an ensemble piece, and an ensemble pieces need time and room. There are eight books. How beautiful will it be to have the Tower of Dawn story running simultaneously as we watch Empire of Storms happening? I mean, it'll be amazing. I, I'm so good, so good. So I hope this happens. I think eventually it's bound to happen, but I, when it does, I hope it's done the way we want it. This is book three. Book one the cover um is not the better cover so i wanted to show you just go look up my throne of glass book talks if you want to know what it's about and you don't know yet it's one of my favorite fantasy series of all time it just ended last year it's so good moving on to the books that haven't been turned into anything as far as i know that i think would make amazing TV shows, okay? Or books that aren't TV shows yet that I think would make amazing TV shows. If done right. You know, if enough money and care is put behind them. That's, that's the stipulation here. And the first of these that I'm going to put out there, because it has to happen eventually, and I want it to happen so bad, is a Harry Potter TV show. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of those films, I love them. They're my comfort movies, I will watch whatever one is ever on. If it's on TV, I'll stop and watch it because I love it, it makes me happy. But there is so much in these books that we did not get to see on screen because we had to fit giant books into a little sliver. You had to jam them onto a shelf that only had this much room and each book is this big. So, ah, oh, I would love that so much and it's coming, the time is coming. We're getting far enough and the last movie came out in 2011. So we're getting, we're getting pretty far. It's almost been 10 years. I feel the turnaround time, it's gotta be like 20 years, 15 years. I, it's gonna happen any minute. You know, we just gotta wait for JK Rowling to okay it. There just has to be a great team behind it. Could you imagine an HBO Harry Potter adaptation? Could you imagine it? Could you shout? Oh yes. Could you imagine a new Ginny? My heart pit a at the thought. It's gonna happen eventually. But whenever that day comes, I will rejoice. Next, I am adamant that this happened. I don't know who owns the rights right now, but Percy Jackson, the, te the television series has to happen. We now have seen a successful television series and a successful movie series grow with the actors, okay? Stranger Things, we started when they were 11, 12. That's what we need to do with the lightning thief. And we have to walk that line that Chris Columbus walked so well in the first Harry Potter film between like heartwarming and cheesy. And it's perfect, the perfect balance in The Sorcerer's Stone. It has to take the source material seriously, but also lightheartedly. And it has to have a budget, a real good budget. Stranger Things sort of takes sort of mood, tone, for Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief would be great. You know, there's so much humor, lots of kids, 
but it's not shot like a kid's show. It's not like her, her, Nickelodeon. You know, it's not overacted. It's the, the kids are the appropriate age. We can delve into this story. There's so much content for Percy Jackson. There's so much to work with. We need someone who cares a lot about these books and making them great to get the rights and make this into a show. The, the Percy Jackson film legacy cannot be left with those two things that we saw in the theater. We can't. can't. No, no. Like, just why? Why are the actors 50? Why? Percy's 12 in the first. 12! I'm pretty sure he's 12. Yeah, he's 12. He's 12. I love Logan Lerman, but he's like 50. Not 50. He's younger than me. But he's in his 20s, okay? He was in his late teens or 20s when that movie was shot. It didn't make any sense. We couldn't go from there. You can't grow up in a series if you're already grown up. That's just not how humans work. Another one, Vampire Academy. Now, there's so much world. There's so much to play with. It's out of boarding school. Like, it would make an amazing TV show. There are seven books. There's so many characters. They're all so colorful. There's so many adventures. Like, it's so funny. It's so packed with humor. And it was stuffed into, you know, a little space on the shelf for the movie. It wasn't taken seriously as amazing content. You know, it was taken as another teen YA movie that will explode no matter what we do with it. So let's just, uh, let's cut this out, cut this out. Let's just, nah, 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 and do whatever, you know, if it works, it goes, it works. And instead of like putting the care into creating the mythology, I mean, they just dropped an info dump about the world in the first five minutes and it was just like, let me tell you all the background of this story. But if we had a show, they have time to build the world, delve into all those amazing characters. Like those books are fantastic. If you haven't read them yet, they're so much fun and it just hasn't been done justice. And you know what could do it justice? More time, a show with a budget and a great team of people who wanna make it into the best thing it can be instead of trying to get it out quickly. They could change the name. Oh. Like we didn't even really delve into the different kinds of vampires. We didn't get to go to Russia. We didn't do any of the fun stuff. The first book is just the build and then all the other books like after that, like really dig into all these crazy adventures that are amazing. You know what would make an amazing TV show? Like if a streaming service or if a cable network, the Scythe trilogy, the Scythe series. <laughs> Please, dear Lord, somebody make this into a TV series. It probably would also make great movies. But, oh, the series prospects are so, um, this needs to happen. I think this could the most easily, of the ones that I have here that need to be TV shows, be adapted. It doesn't take as much CGI. It's prime time for it. Like, this type of story, that's what we want right now. It's Handmaid's Tale level, f utopian future, and... Oh, it's so good. This is so, so good. So, 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 so good. If HBO did this, HBO can't really do this. So since HBO has taken, has taken on, they both die at the end. Probably not them, but like if another cable network wants to take on something just as amazing or streaming service like Netflix, I don't think they have something big like this or like Showtime or AMC. AMC could do a great job with this. Somebody's got to jump on site. I'm sure the rights to this are already sold. So maybe it's already in the works to be a movie. I'm excited for whatever it becomes. The content is so excellent. It doesn't matter what it's adapted to. Like it could be fantastic but I think it would make just amazing TV. I want to see all the details of this world. I don't want anything to be squished out to fit into a movie. And the last books are Rainbow Rouse books. And I think this would make an amazing ensemble series. If all these characters, we followed all these stories intertwined into one show. Like I'm very nervous for anyone to touch Fangirl by itself, but Fangirl like mixed with other stories, like mixed with other characters as an ensemble of her pieces. I think somehow they could be woven together really, really beautifully. I mean, Eleanor and Park would make a fantastic contemporary film. Landline, Landline's a little more internal, but it could be. Fangirl is very internal, so I'm very scared of them touching this because I, I would have to be perfect, and I know it probably wouldn't be exactly what I like wanted it to be because this is just such a special book to me. But combine all these, combine attachments in some way, I think they could be really wonderful. Like four weddings and a funeral. But all these different stories somehow intertwining, of course they would have to become more connected and maybe people will be related to each other or friends with each other, but I think there's a lot of potential there to make a TV show like that. Imagine I'm holding attachments too, because I think they all could be written together. They could also all be written separately. Again, I'm sure that all the film or TV rights have already been snatched up by different companies. Finally, moving on to the official section of things that I fear the adaptations of. The first obviously was Fangirl, I already 
said it, so kind of. Got a stepped on my own toes there. The other adaptation prospect that scares the crap out of me is the Infernal Devices series because I love this trilogy so much. It's my favorite trilogy of all time, and I don't, I don't want anything less than perfection for it. <laughs> it's a period piece. It needs a budget. It needs tender, loving care. It needs to be taken seriously as a project. And like when I say I want things to be taken seriously, I don't mean like they have to take themselves seriously. I mean like when someone's making it, I don't want them to think this is gonna be a huge cash grab. Let's get it out as soon as possible. I wanted to take it seriously and be like, let's make this amazing. It's an amazing piece of content and I love it. There is so much potential to make this into something amazing. It also could so easily be not made amazing because there's so much CGI involved. There's so much world building. If it's done lazily, then it won't show how beautiful it actually is. Ugh. I'd love to hear any that are on your list that I didn't talk about or your opinions on anything I talked about. Also, really quickly, want to let you know that I'm going to be at Y'all Fest in Charleston, South Carolina this year. I'll be doing a signing for a Game of Better on November 8th at 2 p.m. More information is in the description below. And on Saturday, November 9th, there will be a book explosion meetup. It's a free festival. Information is in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!